Ambrose, finally, we're making some progress towards James fighting for that elusive world title. Anthony Durrell, tell me all about him as a prospect and as an opponent, and how you expect the fight to go. Yeah, it's actually, not to confuse it, it's Andre Durrell. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry and, and Anthony Durrell, of course, yeah. is the current WBC of champion. Yeah, of course, James swore allegiance to the IBF. Um, as we all know, in record time, he was British champion and European champion. And then defended the European title, I think, three times. When was offered the opportunity to, to go for the WBC silver, which put him in contention for the WBC title fight. And um, successfully defended that three times. And um, we were getting no nearer with the WBC and the Sakio Bika fight. Um, I spoke with Eddie Hearn, um, considering James' options. And... Um, we got together with, with Matchroom to fight on that incredible Wembley bill and, um, and then subsequently Liverpool. James was promised um, a fight against the winner of Frotch and Groves and of course that has not materialised. And all the time, it, it's, it's one thing for it not to materialise, but when somebody is bad-mouthing your status by saying you're not worthy, you know, it's not good enough, and that's not for Carl Frotch to decide. That was for the IBF to decide. And we've had to sit with James and, and you know, s school him through this, all these bumps and crevices that present themselves. Because how has he, he managed those, you know? Well, where, where James is very fortunate, um, James is a mum's boy, you know. He is a member of a really, really extraordinarily close family. And I think, I'm not patronised, but you yourself yeah, witnessed witness. this. Yeah, definitely. And on it. And it's, it is a very tight and close circle. Um, where honesty is the best policy and there's no good saying something in five words if one word is going to be the effective one. So James has always always had that backbone and that served him very, very well. Um, Jim McDonnell, probably um, one of the finest minds and one of the finest physical motivators in boxing today. You know, he climbed the mountain himself. You know, I, I count myself in that list. You know, we sit down with work as a team constantly, I'm always aware. We speak several times daily, and it's really, really important to do that so we can gauge and temper James's moods and the way he is reacting to circumstances around him. So it's been wonderful, and um, the reward is what we came here to announce today. You, you mentioned in the press conference that he's a hero. Yeah. Qualify seriously. that statement for those who are sitting and, and, and going to be at home and thinking hero, James Nagel. Yeah, a hero. I mean, let me say this first of all. In comparison to our guys who are out fighting wars and everything else, you know, James would never call himself a hero. N no way. They are true fighting people. And James is on record as having said those things himself, so I'm not slotting those in. But a hero. Somebody who goes out representing the nation in international affairs, international sporting arenas, and comes home, um, not having just fought bravely, but triumphant, you know, has risen to the top of the pile. That, in my mind, is a hero. You know, and we use this term when the London Games were being staged. You know, that was the actual anthem um, to go in. So it, it, it's not something that I just say, you know, off the top of my head. Something, you know, I measure. I measure it again against the background. I referred to it earlier on, of that great era, you know, Ben Eubank and Watts. I was the architect and the author of that era. So, you know, I think Andrew Lloyd Webber goes crazy over having written Cats and everything. Give me a chance. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like in that same role. So, so where James is, is concerned, he's now, his focus now is to become the first it isn't to go and find the softest option and then say, well, I beat him, so it's, it's to bring them on, whoever it is. It does not matter. And the difference between James Gall and other champions around the world is James Gall, when he becomes world champion, and he will, by the grace of God, will be looking to unify. He will be looking to, to the, other, at the other claimants, the other pretenders, and he will not shirk from the fight. If he's not physically capable of beating somebody, it's time to get out. This isn't, this isn't a place for picking and choosing your moments. Let me bring myself around to Carl Frotch again. You know, 
This guy fights twice a year if you're lucky, maybe once a year. Is that a champion? But How can you not be motivated? You come into boxing for one thing, money. You know, man is motivated by fear or greed, or both of them. And in this instance, you know, I think it's an insult if people wanted to compare Carl, Carl Fox with Nigel Benn. Nigel Benn spent four years, 256 days in the army, fought three tours of duty, duty in Northern Ireland, one in, in Afghanistan, Afghanistan um, and came here, you know, as a face-first boxer and fought on foreign territories to win a, a world title. Did he shirk from the fight? Never, ever, ever, ever. He doesn't even have a ball ball. MBE, not heard of. Carl Froch, if everybody believes in the bullshit that, that he's pumping out, he'll be getting a CBE. Not on. You know, absolutely not on. 2008 till now, it's been a journey. Six years today. Six years today. Tell me about what happens if he wins that, when he wins that world title. And, how, you know, how long is he in the game after that? You've talked about him, you know, looking to the other pretenders, the other yeah. claimants. How long is he in the game after that? Because it's, I, it's, it's, almost, it's almost a peak, and there's only, yeah. there's only one way to go from a peak, isn't there? Absolutely. I, I say to James, you'll fight ten more times. You'll have another ten fights. All of them will be world title fights. How much money can he earn in those ten fights? 25, 25 million, 30 million pounds. Um, I, I say that, I told James when he was an amateur, um, you would earn £20 million as a professional boxer. His response was kind of like expletive, deletive, excited, um, and I constantly reminded him, this. one day, one day, he will fight for more than £20 million. The year is right. Those of us who were at the O2 Arena on Saturday saw what really was the remnants of the... Um, Anthony Joshua show. A phenomenon. Something happened. People decided, we want to come to the show anyway. We don't want our money back. And it was one of the most exciting and thrilling shows that I've been in, in in this country. And James is a product of his time. Social media, you know, I mean, look at yourselves now sitting down. I'm from an era where it was BBC, ITV, and latterly, Sky TV. Today, you know, there are hundreds of and I do mean hundreds of individual, independent, you know, news gathering and media feeding, uh, you know, entities. It, it's a different world, and James is, is, is sitting prime to exploit that. A hero in this country. I hope James never fights abroad. I sincerely do, because we got it right now. There ain't too many ballparks or whatever in the United States selling 80,000 tickets for real money. What everybody forgets about Wembley is most of the tickets were resold at a higher value than the face value. And it shows what an appetite. And on the night, it was very difficult um, for people who've even been hanging around for a day to get tickets. If you could, if you could depict the big fight, the £20 million fight that James has got coming, where would it be and who would it be against for you? Wembley Stadium. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in a fantasy scenario, James would fight George Groves um, once and for all. Once and for all. Now, for that fight to happen, it may well be that James fights George Groves twice ahead of us. Um, but now let me tell you something. I spoke to George Groves last week and asked him to... Look, we may as well just get straight to the point. You and James, two and a half million pound guarantee each. You probably get four million quid each if we work this properly. And uh, and I was in a flow, you know, like things were moving on there. What do you think, George? Well, I think when we both become world champions, it'll be a bigger fight. I said, when you both become world champions, you won't fight each other because you'll be one body, he'll be the other, you'll say one's worth more than this. Right now, we can speak to the IBF, there's a good chance Darrell will stand to one side to allow this fight to go on. He, he, he was deluded. He said he wanted 65-35 split. He wanted to, listen to this, he wanted to go in the ring second, he wanted to go on the weigh-in scales second, he wanted to choose his fighters in three places on the undercard. I mean, all these things really... So I said to him, in other words, you don't want to fight. Yeah. 
James to get up. Well, you know, it could, it could be like, George, thanks a lot in the conversation. Now, of course, we've seen these Twitter things, tweeting all over the place, you know, with him saying this, that and the other. The guy is not right in the head. He's absolutely deluded. What I think is he's running scared of fighting James. James is now the avoided guy. This, you know, Darrell. Darrell's a wonderfully gifted fighter and all the Americans rate him and everything. But, you know, James bashed up their guy, Gonzalez, who Andre Ward swore he would be. And, and there is something... You know, everybody talks about Andre Ward and, and now Jay-Z, of course, he's the guy... Rock Nation. Yeah, behind Andre. I know Jay-Z. So that of itself is quite exciting. You make, make no mistake about it. And it probably is the massive fight. That, that would be a phenomenal, phenomenal Wembley Stadium fight. And I, I don't go with this that Andre Ward doesn't sell tickets. He scares the living daylights out of people. That's his problem. You know, we've never had a problem when there's been a champion who's not a ticket seller. You just get a guy who can beat him. And then, of course, he annexes that title. So, going back to your question, Wembley Stadium, Andre Ward, phenomenal fighter. And let I, me, I don't, now, I don't let me throw another curveball. Sure. Let me throw another curveball. Before the end of next year, Wembley Stadium, James Nigel, and Chris Eubank Jr. Don't, don't, don't grimace. Don't grimace. He's not ready. I thought that he's not ready. He's as ready as he's going to be. He's fighting for an interim world title in his next fight. He's not ready. Well, it's, it's, it's um, the only he, he's person... He's got it, but he's not ready. The only I mean, person, Billy Joe showed him, but he's not ready. But, but he, he would have learned from there, his own stupidity. Definitely. He would have learned that, you know... Do you think he'll take his dad out the corner? Because that well, was part of the problem, wasn't it? Well, that is the problem. Yeah. That is the problem. That's why when we talk about these things, I didn't mention the dad being yeah, in I there. can. I assume you can. Yeah. And I listen, I'm worried about saying anything about um, Eubank Senior. He has no place in there, none whatsoever. Um, you know, he, he was a boxer who felt his way through a career. There weren't, he didn't predetermine to do anything. You know, he did a bit of cherry picking. And the only reason I rate Senior, by the way, is because of the fights with Carl Thompson. When a man showed that mm. he is a man, mm. he was amazing, he's exceptionally bravery and everything else. And Carl Thompson's a warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we know it? It's all right. Ask David Hay. Yeah, I know. I was there. <laughs> so, yeah. so going on it, no, I mean, we're all entitled to dream. And for me, not for personal reasons, but I think that is a fight that will capture the public's imagination in a big, big way. Because if Eubank falls over against Chudinov, he will move up to super middleweight because he kills himself to make yeah. middleweight. Yeah. Absolutely kills himself. And so it's one of those things that could could develop. Um, but in reality, Andre Ward. Andre Ward. And even GGG. If he comes up to super middleweight, because James certainly won't be going down, if he comes up to super middleweight, bring it on. Bring it on. You can't call a guy a hero or, or, or announce him as a hero um, when it's open, you know, to criticism. You can't do it. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Hard work, dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. And that's what we stick to.